husband and I have been married for just over a year now. I had wanted to make a video on how I made my wedding dress like right after the wedding, but um, right after our wedding is when COVID shut everything down. So I felt rude talking about my wedding stuff when everyone probably had to cancel theirs. Mine probably wouldn't have changed much because I had a very tiny wedding, but I still felt like I would be rubbing it in people's faces that I got to get married. So I didn't, and now it's been a year. So I'm gonna explain all the details of my DIY project wedding dress and give a tutorial on exactly how I made the skirt for it and just kind of give information on what I did for everything else by showing you this dress. So any of the information that I give in this video doesn't have to be used for a wedding dress. You can use it for prom, homecoming, whatever, any kind of event you have, or you just want to dress fancy. I had wanted to use it for a anniversary photo shoot, but we just couldn't afford it, so we didn't do something like that. So I always kind of hated the idea of spending thousands of dollars on a dress that I would only wear once. And I always kind of knew I would DIY a lot of things, like it was always in the back of my head that this would just be a project of mine. Or I would end up finding a dress on discount somewhere, or maybe buying something from like, I think it's ASOS that has wedding dress-like dresses that are just less expensive. I did actually go to bridal shops a couple times. I made the mistake of going alone my first time, and I had actually recently gained a bunch of weight right before I went and uh, it just didn't go well. I hated the way everything looked on me, except for one of the dresses, but it was because in the back of my head, I knew I could lose enough weight to make that dress look the way I wanted to, so it just wasn't a good setup. And when I had sent pictures to both my mom and my best friend, they liked the one that I least liked, but they were looking at me currently, and it did look beautiful on me at the time, but I just, I couldn't, lots of body image issues to unpack there, but it was just not fun. I kind of stopped for a little bit and I had gone shopping online and I had found something that I thought I wanted. And then I went out again with my friend and we had found a perfect dress that was just a bit too small. And I knew I could lose the weight for it, but it was $1,200 because we were on a tight budget. I was trying to keep our wedding under a certain amount and I didn't want to spend $1,200 on a dress which isn't that expensive, I'm just very... I don't like to spend a lot of money. So before I had gone on this shopping trip, I had actually bought something from a site called yesstyle.com and I had just kept it in the back of my closet thinking, if I don't find anything, that's my DIY project. I've had this dress that was like $43 and <coughs> the original plan was to take this dress and make a new skirt for it and turn it into the dress that I originally wanted. But I was like, you know what? I might as well go to a bridal shop and see if I find something so I don't have to do any work. But my my DIY crazy, uh, like anxious self is like, no, you gotta do it yourself. And for some reason I just decided to put it on again today and I just feel so much better in it and relaxed and I don't know. And as soon as we got done with that shopping trip, I grabbed it out of the closet, showed it to my friend, and I explained to her what I wanted to do to it, and she was all go for it. So like, you sometimes you just need someone to give you a thumbs up sometimes, and that's what I needed. This is what it looked like on the website. This is what it looked like on me. So Yes Style has Asian sizes, so everything is a bit smaller and they definitely didn't have my size. I did end up losing some weight for the wedding, but that's a whole other story to unpack because at this point I only had like three months. So I knew for this dress specifically that I would have to close up the slit and also give it a bit of room in the hips. The first thing I did was remove the beading from the waist. And then I found the most similar fabric that I could opened up the slit just a little bit more at the top and sewed in a panel so that there was a little bit more room in my hips and there was no more slit because I didn't want a slit in my wedding dress. Not that you could see it once I was done, but I just felt better having it closed up. It was very wonky and it was puckered and pulled in spots, but I knew it would be covered up so I wasn't worried. Then I was in and out of Joann's and Hobby Lobby consistently checking fabric.com to find some kind of lace material that I could use to make something happen with this dress. 
Here are a few of my sketches and ideas. I was almost defeated, but then I came across this stunning fabric on eBay. eBay is so good for finding less expensive lace and other materials. I spent a total of $43.96 on four yards of the lace. I'll have the link in the description box to the lace I bought. I think it's still available. And I think the last time I checked, it's actually even less expensive than when I got it. So once I got the fabric, I wanted to make the skirt. I had found a super simple video on how to make a circle skirt. I'll link that video down below and also explain here how I used it and modified it for my dress. I'll be remaking the skirt with this black lace for the tutorial. This black lace I found on fabric.com. I'll also have that link down below. So you don't actually need four yards of lace, but I bought that much just in case I made a mistake. I could also make it bigger than I thought I would need it just in case I wanted to bring it in. You also need tulle to go underneath the skirt if you plan on making it opaque. I ended up going with, I think, three layers of tulle under my actual wedding dress to make it not see-through. So depending on how the tulle is shipped to you, anywhere from six to nine yards will probably do it. I can't remember exactly how much tulle I bought for my wedding dress because I was just in and out of the store a lot. Like, I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> And then you just need a small bit of material for the waistband. I would recommend getting a stiffer fabric just so it's easier to sew. So we're gonna start with two measurements. First is your waist. Wherever you want the skirt to sit is where you're going to measure. And I would add an inch for seam allowance and some room just in case you mess up. I went with 34 inches for my waist. I added an inch, so I got 35 inches. You're gonna divide that measurement by pi 3.14 to get the first part of your circle skirt measurement. For me, that was just over 11 inches, so I just went with 11 inches. And then the next measurement you're gonna get is the length. If you plan on wearing heels, put those shoes on before you measure this because you want the skirt to be as long as your shoes. Lay the fabric with a fold on one side. From the corner of the folded edge, measure your first measurement in multiple spots until you get a circular edge. I forgot to cut off the scalloped edge. If your lace has that, you should do that at this point and then make sure your measurement is off of that straight edge. From that waist circle measurement, you're gonna measure the length of the skirt the same exact way, making another bigger circle. The length of my material only allowed for 38 inches. I thought it would be cool to make the back of the skirt longer just because I wanted some of it to be longer. If you want a high-low skirt, you just extend the length as you go. So if you want it really short in the front, say like 20 inches long, you measure 20 inches. And then as you go, you just get it longer and longer and longer until it's 38 inches in the back. Cut out the skirt along the curved edges. You should have a full circle skirt at this point. You're gonna repeat this process with the tool layers. If you're using a lace like me and don't want it to be see-through, repeat it until you have it as sheer as you are comfortable with. I believe I did three layers of tool on my wedding dress, like I said. I can't remember exactly how much I spent on that tool. I'd have to go dig out my wedding planning book, but I think I spent around $50 on fabric.com. I'll double check that. Now to make the waistband, the two measurements you're going to need are your waist plus seam allowance. I went with my same 35 inches. And then you're gonna need how tall you want the waistband times two plus some seam allowance. 
I added some extra seam allowance to that 35 inches because for some reason the first time I cut it out, it wasn't long enough. So for my total measurement, I ended up with a rectangle, 36 inches in length, and four inches in width. I'm using this weird bit of shiny material, like I said, because it's all I had at the moment, but something with some stiffness would be better. There's also lining materials you can sew into it, but we all know I'm a make it work person, not a make it right. Once the waistband is cut out, Lay all the skirt pieces together in order. If your lace has a front and a back side, make sure that it's facing the right way. Do a quick, I think it's called a basting stitch to hold them all together. Pin the waistband along the skirt waist and sew. I decided I want the less shiny side to be out, so I pinned it on backwards. Once you have the waistband sewn together, you can take out the basting stitch. This part is kind of hard to explain, but since you have the waistband facing down over the skirt, once you've got it sewn, you're gonna fold it over on the other side and then roll under the edge so that you have a nice seam. Pin it in place and sew. I hate the fabric I used here, super puckery, and I'm not very good at sewing. On my wedding dress, I actually used a thick lace trim. I was also too lazy to change my bobbin to black thread, so one side had white threads. So I just um, dyed them with fabric markers. Not really, I colored it with a Sharpie, but no one's gonna know. No one's gonna know. How would they know? <laughs> Once you have the waistband completely done, you can lay out the skirt completely flat and line up the open edges and do a quick basting stitch to those as well, just so that they stay together. If you're anything like me and you suck at measuring, trim off any excess materials <laughs> that you have on the ends of the skirt. If you know how to sew in a zipper at this point, close off the back of the skirt as you normally would with a zipper. I do not, so in my case, I sewed it together, leaving about seven or so inches open. Leave enough open that you know you can get it up over your hips or over your head. Fold down and sew the open edges and add whatever kind of closures you want. I had some of these little snaps and hooks, not the best, but it's what I had on hand and it worked for me. On my wedding dress, I also added hooks to the waistline of my actual dress so that the skirt would actually stay in place and not continuously slide down the dress. And that's it for the skirt. Just a few steps. They sound complicated, but once you're kind of working with it, it's a lot easier than it seems. I didn't hem mine just because it was all wonky and it would have ended up too short. Had I done that for my wedding dress, I would have had a professional do it anyway, just because I have nothing to set the skirt on in order for me to cut it correctly, if that makes sense. Now for the rest of the dress, with whatever lace I had left over, I cut out some pieces that I liked for appliques and attached them by hand sewing them right onto the bodice. I couldn't get the dress open to remove the little cup pads on the boobs, so I sewed right through them. Not the prettiest finish, but I was still so happy with how it came out. I did add a belt too, but I regret it now. I had fallen in love with one at David's Bridal, but I didn't want to spend $150 on it, so I tried to replicate it. I don't like looking back at it. It looks cheap and weird. I mean, that's kind of me, but still. I wish I had just splurged and bought the beautiful belt or gone without. So after I got all the appliques done and placed and tried on and, and everything, this is how my wedding dress came out and this is also how the black dress came out. Here are some random things that I had on my Pinterest board if you wanna compare, see how well I did coming up with my vision. <laughs> I hope this was helpful for someone, wedding, prom, whatever event you're going to. If you can't find something that's exactly like what you're looking for in your price range, find something inexpensive that you can DIY 
I did also make my veil. I was going to include the tutorial on how I made that in this video, but when I made it for the black dress, the black tool I got was not as nice as the tool I got for my wedding dress, so it was kind of coming off like 80s dead bride costume, and it's literally just cut a really long rectangle, like a rectangle as long as you want the veil to be and round off the edges, and then I stuck little pins through it to stick in my hair, and that, that was it. Just some beautiful bobby pins stuck through the fabric and pinned to the back of my head, so it would get that nice, like, drapey... I don't know how to explain it, but it was beautiful. Please leave a like and a comment and a subscribe. Tell me down below if there's anything you want me to try sewing, turning into a DIY project, I don't know. I now try to upload every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and I'm gonna try something. If any of you turn on your notifications for my channel, let me know if it actually works because I feel like I am being hidden, like my channel is just slowly disappearing. So if anybody turns on their notifications for me, let me know how it works, um, or just turn it on if you don't because I feel like I'm not being shown in the YouTube stuffs. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you in my next one. Bye bye You can click here if you want to see more of my wedding. You can also click here if you want to see more of my own DIY projects and costumes and things that I've made. And also subscribe.